happens in this city to heart, and I, I really do take it personally. So I share the anger and frustration that many Chicagoans are having today. Because if anything, it should underscore the continuing issue that we have with illegal guns and offenders out on the street that are willing to use them. Immediately following the incidents that we saw over the weekend, I ordered additional deployments of officers in those areas to prevent the retaliatory shootings. In fact, 46 people were arrested for gun charges this weekend, and we seized 60 guns over the weekend, adding to the 5,600 guns that we've also seized so far this year. It's because of the hard work of the officers in CPD that we've seen a 20% reduction in murders this year and roughly 17% reductions in shootings in the year of 2018. On top of that, CPD officers will continue to patrol these areas and our strategic decision support centers will be continuously working to predict any potential hotspots before they turn violent. Additionally, we're planning future enforcement missions to focus on the individuals driving the violence. But the truth is, and maybe you all are tired of hearing, hearing me say that, but as long as we fail to hold repeat gun offenders accountable for their actions, we're going to keep having these discussions on Monday mornings. That's just the truth of it. Because it's the same people who are pulling the triggers in some of these communities. This isn't a widespread issue among citizens of this city. This is a small subset of individuals who think they can play by their own rules because they continue to get a slap on the wrist when we arrest them. Despite the legislation we passed last year for being a repeat gun offender and breaking the law, these individuals still insist on doing just that. I'm tired of it. Everybody in this city should be tired of it. The Chicago Police Department cannot do this alone. Mary Manuel has made significant investments in mentoring at-risk youth and creating job opportunities in some of our most challenged neighborhoods. But he can't do it alone. We need everyone, especially our judicial partners, to start making repeat gun offenders feel the real consequences for their actions. We need our governor to sign a bill that makes it more difficult for habitual armed offenders to obtain weapons. We need the community and community leaders to work with us we need parents to be parents. We need neighborhoods to be neighborhoods. You all know who these individuals are. They come to your homes every day, sleep with you every night. Grandparents, parents, siblings, significant others. You know who they are. We also need those involved with the community to mentor our youth. As a department, we've worked really hard and invested countless man hours and resources to identify individuals that are disproportionately causing the violence in certain parts of the city. These shootings are not random. They are fueled by gang conflicts. We know who they are, and we continue to send a message that it's okay to commit these crimes by not doing anything as a community. We are all supposed to be on the same side. CPD can be better, but this city can be better. All of those people that I mentioned before need to work together against the violence so that our communities can rebuild. And despite what we saw this weekend, I'm still pleased between CPD's work, the mayor's investments, and the work of our community members that we're still reducing overall gun violence this year. But we still have a lot more work to, to do. And I think that was evidenced by this weekend. But we need everyone to come to the table with less talk and more action. And now I'd like to uh, ask Mary Emanuel, CPD's biggest supporter, to come up and, and share some thoughts. I'd also like to thank the commander, the superintendent, the alderman. This morning, I spoke at a graduation of young men and women as part of our summer jobs. Their parents were there. And I told them then, as I told, I took, told them about taking my train in with my daughter as she went to her summer job. 
These are young kids from our high schools. And I said to the parents, you know, in the Jewish faith, when you get married, you break the glass. And the reason is, is to remind us that in a moment of joy and happiness and celebration of life, life is fragile. And I asked the parents, in the same way that I said goodbye to my daughter on the train, and they're looking at their children celebrating this milestone, to hug them, to tell them that you love them. Because I was leaving that graduation and I was going to Mount Sinai and Stroger Hospital. To hug the doctors and nurses and medical teams while they acted professionally, they too have a soul. and let them know how much I appreciated what they did this weekend. Look, we have a heavy heart. Our souls are burdened. What happened this weekend did not happen in every neighborhood in Chicago, but it is unacceptable to happen in any neighborhood of Chicago. We are a better city. I know the people of this city, of every walk of life. I've been on the phone with a mother today, two of them. They have the same aspirations, same desires that I do for my children that you do. And somebody on a bike takes that child from that parent. This is not about the Chicago Police Department alone. It's not about a summer jobs program alone. This is about the fabric of a neighborhood and community. As the superintendent just said, who knows who did this? So if you say enough is enough, we must come forward as a neighborhood where a moral center of gravity holds. I saw it, as the soup did, with Pastor Brooks on the west side on Wednesday night. Police, religious leaders, congregants, people from all parts of the city walking together. You can talk about the weather, but the weather didn't pull the trigger. And you could talk about jobs and they count, but in parts of the city where there aren't jobs, people did not pull the trigger. There are values, there are too many guns on the street, too many people with criminal records on the street, and there is a shortage of values about what is right, what is wrong, what is acceptable, what is condoned, and what is condemned. And we as a city, in every corner, have an accountability and a responsibility. If you know who did this, be a, be a neighbor. Speak up. Neighbors come together. The city will be with you shoulder to shoulder. But this is not about alone, how many police, where were they? The superintendent will take accountability for that. This is not about how many summer jobs, investments. We will do that and we have more to do, much more to do. But there's something more at stake. And all of us 
know that this is not Chicago, what we saw. Therefore, all of us who love this city and call it home have a responsibility to heal our neighborhoods, to hold a mother or a father or a grandmother in our arms. And as they heal, we as a city must heal. Not by pointing fingers, but by finding compassion and concern and actually being a neighborhood and community. I have met these people as yesterday in Belmont Cragen, celebrating together the possibility of a new school. That is who I know we are. And we are better than what we saw. It may not have been in your neighborhood. It may not have been in your community. It may not have been in your block. But that block, that neighborhood, and that community is in the city of Chicago and it is part of our home. And the people that make that up, that community, know that they have a city that stands with them. And as I said to the doctors and nurses this weekend, this today, to not forget to take care of themselves as well. My parents met at Mount Sinai. They did a heroic job as our police officers did as our residents. But they too have a soul. They too have a heart. And this rips at both of those. We owe it to each other to do better and be better. Take questions. Superintendent, have any people been arrested in connection with any of the shootings that happened this weekend? Say again? Have any people been arrested in connection with any of the shootings that happened this past weekend? We have uh, really good leads on, on quite a few of them, but we haven't made any physical arrests yet. And the other thing, too, is um, what we've been hearing about what happened this weekend, especially with respect to the mass shootings and the big mass shootings, is that they happened um, in areas where there were mass gatherings, like possibly there have been parties happening on these blocks. I don't know if these were like, unofficial block parties, but I know we've been hearing about that in the news a lot lately. Did any of these shootings, particularly the mass shootings over the weekend, um, did they happen at these unofficial block parties that were happening on the yeah, we had, we had a few that were uh, large gatherings on particular blocks. But, but I have to tell you, this, what we saw this weekend, it just it rips at everything that I believe in. Because I, I know as a city and as a neighborhood, these neighborhoods across the city, we can do better. Certainly CPD can do better. But, but at the end of the day, the members of CPD don't go to bed with these individuals at night. They don't wake up with them in the morning. It's very rare we actually witness this stuff. Somebody knows who did it. They do. They know that. They hold me accountable. They hold the mayor accountable. They hold the city council accountable. Where's the accountability? You know what I never hear? I hear people holding us accountable all the time. I never hear people saying, these individuals out here in the streets need to stop pulling the trigger. I never hear that. I never hear that. They get a pass from everybody. And they shouldn't. They shouldn't. You should be able to gather on your block and have a block club party with, with not the fear of being gunned down. And it's the same individuals that continuously commit these crimes. Where's the accountability for them? Superintendent John. question. It's hard for me to breathe, so I have to stand up to speak. Forgive me. Um, I've been shot. I was a drug dealer half my life, and I shot a lot of people. About a week ago, we got together with most of the heads of the gangs, the founders, as well as people that were in the room that nodded that they were shooters. And in that meeting, they expressed that they were tired of some of their loose cannons that are going out and shooting. But one of the things that I'm from New York City, my commitment is to be here for the summer. I've been 24 days without food and just hoping for a week of peace in Chicago. But while we've been here, 
I didn't. I don't see like one of the strategies that worked in New York in those neighborhoods with Crime Stopper signs all over billboards in New York that said, "If you see something, call this number. You don't have to identify yourself." I'm just wondering, are you guys at a point now where you would say, "Hey, I'm clergy. Can, we we can clergy come in. Can ex gang members come in?" Can cops in other areas? New York City is now one of the safest cities. LA is now safer. Can y'all join forces? Is there openness to that of saying, okay, we're not Chicago, we don't know everything. Can we now make this a national issue where we all work together and share intelligence? Maybe it's happening, but I pray for y'all regularly and I pray in Jesus' name that you guys knock this out the park because we want to be safe. My wife and I had to dive on the floor while we were driving here two minutes from a shootout. Okay. So you, you guys you know what? great. Listen, I, I appreciate those comments. And, and the answer to your question, the short answer to your question is yes, we are doing that. You know, since I became superintendent, I've been all over the country as well as my command staff colla co you know, collaborating with other agencies to do exactly what you're talking about. But at the end of the day, you are exactly right. A lot of the shooters that I talk to, they're tired of it. Well then, if you're tired of it, prove you're tired of it. Get your, your buddies to put down the guns. Is anybody talking so far? Are people from the community talking to you guys, giving you tips about what's happened this weekend? Has that flow of information started? Yeah, right. We, we have been talking to several individuals. You know, um, listen, the, the good people in these communities, and, and the good people far outweigh the, the, the bad people. They do far outweigh them. They're sick of it. So, yeah, they're calling. It. I got several calls this morning myself. You know, I think half the city has my cell phone number. You know, so people call me to give me tips and clues, you know, but we work hard with the detective division. We work hard with the state's attorney's office to ensure these people, if you do come forward and testify, it's our obligation and responsibility to keep you safe. Let me, let me, let me, let me do one thing and then go right to you. I regularly attend church, much to my rabbi's chagrin, but I do. I've seen the love, compassion, and sense of community in that place of faith on Sunday. It needs to be out on the streets Sunday through Sunday, not just confined to the walls of a place of worship. And I've seen a lot of religious leaders and members of those congregations do exactly that. Take that faith, take that sense of neighborhood out to the street. That's what Pastor Brooks did on the west side. That's what a number of pastors on the south side do. Don't think for a moment people don't know who in the neighborhood was responsible, who actually did this. And so if you say to yourself, enough is enough, will that implore you to then do something so this doesn't happen again. The offender, in almost every situation, I can't say it universally, is known, known by somebody. They have a moral responsibility to speak up so there can be legal accountability for those actions. Mayor, so I, just to, yeah, to, to I promise. With, you mentioned the numbers are down, Superintendent. Mm -hmm. Why? Then such a violent weekend this weekend. What has your investigation told you about the gang dynamics or whatever that led to all of these shootings this last weekend? Well, you know what? You know, people have asked me, is it the weather? Is it this? Is it that? No, it's the it's the psychology of the people pulling these triggers. That's what it is. You know, weather. All that does is 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 afford more people to be out to enjoy the summertime. But it doesn't. The weather doesn't cause a person to say, you know what? It's 90 degrees, I'm going to go out and shoot somebody. It doesn't work like that. It's just simply holding these individuals accountable. Now, the, the, the fact that we had so much this weekend, you know, we'll have to wait and see if we can determine that. But, but I doubt, because, listen, this was, this was contained in roughly four districts in the city, on the south side and the west side, right? So it's not like those people got together and said, we're going to go out here and create chaos. That's not what happened. It's just a matter of us being better as a society, holding people that pull triggers accountable. And Superintendent. Did Lollapalooza play any role in, in perhaps? Not no, there was no drain of resources regarding Lollapalooza. That was all um, overtime initiative that, that handled Can I add one thing to this? 
I really want you to hear a couple things. This did not happen in every neighborhood, and it's not acceptable in any neighborhood. As the superintendent just noted to you as they look at this, there's about four or five districts, primarily on the southwest side, that the bulk of this criminal activity and gang violence happened. There are neighborhoods and communities similar to the ones where this happened, where nothing happened. Similar weather conditions, similar economic conditions, similar family, cultural. So the question is, what made that different? And I'm constantly reminding your every question, not every question, but like you asked the appropriate question, Lollapalooza question was asked, where, where was the police, what were they, what were they doing? What happened here? What was the distribution? There's another set of questions, legitimate questions. I'm not, really, I'm not questioning the questions. There is a component of this that gets to some, a moral, ethical value piece that is a question that must also have equal value and be measured in the same way. And I do want to implore, and I do say this, having talked to one mother today, lost a child. She did everything right as a parent. Her child has been stolen from her and for her friends, that child will never have a childhood again. And therefore, we must use that to heal ourselves and be better, which requires a component that doesn't look at all the conditions, but actually ask who hold the trigger, hold them accountable for what they did. Mayor. Sorry, Mayor. Ford was on Fox and Friends saying, you know, it's time to, to work better with the federal government and the Trump Green Zone here in Chicago, partner with them for credit yeah, writing and for that. economic stuff. Is it, is it time to, to get broader federal assistance and is there any, anything that that can do? Listen, I, I tell you from a law enforcement standpoint, we work very closely with our uh, federal law enforcement agencies. You know, I don't think that the relationship between CPD and FBI, DEA and ATF have, have ever been as strong as it is right now. So we're already doing, doing those things. Uh, could we do better? Yeah, we, we always can do better. But at the end of the day, the responsibility of, of things like we saw this weekend is everybody's responsibility. I, know, I mean, you know this. There were ATF agents who are out with police officers doing work, I think it was in the 9th District, Yes. that the, F the ATF agent was shot. There's a, that's, I mean, it's a clear example of what they're doing working. And that's, again, I want to underscore with the superintendent. Everybody's pointing at somebody saying them. The criminal and the criminal activity and the gang have to be raised rather than just say, what did the police do? What are the feds doing? Legitimate questions, but not in lieu of another set of questions. Not in lieu of asking, where is the individual or the gang or the culture that condones rather than condemns? And collectively. And I'm, I want to repeat, in the very neighborhoods this happened, there are good people who hold up all the values of what it takes to create a moral center for a neighborhood and community. And there are those who rip at it, and if you know that, they cannot be part of it. But they, can't, they tear at the very fabric. So how do now, you change that, Mayor? Well, this is, it's not just, you said, how do I? That's not the question of what a moral community is. I um, apologize, that's not the right question. I have my responsibility not only as a mayor, I have that. When it comes to values, and I say this all the time, there's policing, there's public servants, there are principals, there are pastors, and there are parents. And every one of those P's play a role. And we have to, one of the things that I'm trying to do, but it's not just us, is provide taking one of those mentors in all, and for eighth, ninth, and 10th grade, we give them three years in a row. I need parents to teach kids, not just I, we need parents to teach kids right from wrong to be involved with their kids. I met a mother today at this graduation. Single mom, three boys. 
One's at Northwestern, the other one's applying to the University of Chicago. What does she do? She cleans at a school by herself, raising three boys all going to unbelievable schools. She is involved in her kids' lives. And I will say as a father of three children, parenting is essential. A place of worship and faith that builds a sense of moral character and judgment to not just the individual, but all of us. And that's a component of it as much as replacing despair with hope. That plays a component of it as much as what the police do, what we're trying to do on some time. But every time we do this, it's a finger pointing at somebody else without also asking a larger question. And so when it says not just what I, I will take my responsibility on the moral component and I'll take also where I have fallen short. But the question is as if by pointing one finger at one person, that's not how you buy in and of itself. All of us collectively and individually as I would suppose if I can, since I started talking about one tradition in the Jewish faith, I'll close with this, which is what I said to my kids and each one of them on their bar mitzvah when they become adults. Rabbi Hillel said, who are you if you are not for yourself? What are you if you're only for yourself? If not now, then when? That is a moral question all of us individually and collectively must ask ourselves. If these are good people in the neighborhoods, why aren't they turning in the bad guys? You know, that, that's a question we've been asking for quite some time. You know, so listen, that, that's something they have to do better at. The police department, you know, I will never run away from the fact that the police department has issues in certain communities across the city. I'll never hide that fact. We've had race relations issues in CPD. I've been a cop for 30 years. Don't think I'm naive or tone deaf to that because I'm not. You know, but what I can say is this. We're working hard to repair relationships in the community, especially the black communities with CPD. That's not easy to do. You think it's easy for me to stand up here and have to talk about this? Because it's not. I don't enjoy this, but I know it's the reality of what we're looking at. So I made a commitment two years ago to make CPD better. We're making progress. But what I'm asking is for the community to step up and do their part also. We can't solve these things without the community. CPD is only as good as the faith that the community has in it. So it's up to me and my command staff to try and repair those relationships in the community. And we're making progress. But at the same time, every societal ill just simply can't be placed at the, the doorstep of the police department and expect them to handle it. The police department is, isn't here to raise children. We're not. I can't tell you how many people come up to us uh, talking about their kids and, and what we can do. No, it's not about what the police department can do. It's about what you should do. You should do. And sometimes it does take a village uh, to raise a child. I'm okay with that. You know, when we see parents out there struggling, it's, it's our obligation and responsibility to reach back and help them raise their children, help them be better parents. You know, so I'll take care of the CPD part of it. But we still need the community's help in resolving some of these issues, issues because it's just, it should be heartbreaking for everybody in this city to see what happened this weekend. And again, it's a, it, 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 it was contained to, out of 22 police districts, it was contained to about four police districts. So the city isn't on fire. We just have to do what we have to do in those uh, challenged areas to make it better. I thank you that question. Yeah, it, 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 that's a frustration that I see. You know, listen, I still, my relatives, people I grew up with in the city, call me all the time. And, and what worries me is that in, in certain areas of the city, we begin to normalize these things. And, and it isn't normal for a child to grow up. I, let, me, let me digress for a moment. I was out on the west side one day. And I was just watching kids play on a playground. And right around the corner from where we were sitting, it's about four gunshots. Bam, 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 bam. I see these kids immediately go down on the ground. We go around the corner. We could still see the smoke, but the offenders were gone. 
So as we're riding around the block looking for them, we go back past the playground. Those kids that had ducked down are now back up playing like nothing happened. That's not normal. It's not normal for those kids to think that that's okay. And I think in, in, in certain aspects, we become desensitized, desensitized to this type of thing. And, and we have to do better. We've been talking with community people right now about um, standing up trauma treatment for people in the communities when, when this type of thing happens. Because the worst thing that we can, ha can do is not do anything and let folks in these communities become desensitized to what's going on. Because this isn't right, it's not normal, and they shouldn't be growing up like that. In certain cities, they'll, they'll put up a tower after someone's shot. Do y'all have a plan like that? Mm -hmm. Some of you. you know what? Yeah.